Hey everyone, it's Jacob again. Uh, I've got another video today on Psalm 1 grammar. Again, I'm making this series of videos for those that want to learn Psalm 1. So whether you're Psalm 1 heritage or you're, you've got friends or family or you're going to go visit, um, the idea is that I'm putting these videos together and as you um, go through them, you should be able to plug in your own words and be able to start speaking Psalm 1. So today's video is about pronouns. And I'll, I'll do a better overview, but basically we're talking about one specific class of pronouns that are called emphatic pronouns. So today we'll do a broad overview of, of pronouns in Psalm 1. We'll talk specifically about emphatic pronouns and how to use them in sentences. And then I've got a practice activity at the end. Uh, I think I've said this before, but the best way to learn Psalm 1 in any language, frankly, is to find opportunities to actually use it and put it into practice. So I highly encourage that wherever you can. Uh, I've got an activity today that'll hopefully kind of help you at least do it on your own. You could do it with partners. In fact, it'd be much better if you did. All right, so pronouns in Psalm 1, they're divided into two families. There's emphatic pronouns, and then there's descriptive pronouns. And basically the, the big difference is um, when you use, and, and by the way, if, if pronouns is not something familiar to you, pronouns are basically words that take the place of nouns. So in English, I is a pronoun, me is a pronoun, you is a pronoun, they, he, she, it, those are all pronouns. Um, in Psalm 1, we, there's pronouns obviously as well, but they're actually a lot more intricate than they are in English, and I'll go over exactly what that means. But before we get into that, um, there's these two families of emphatic versus descriptive. Um, so as you can see in the slide, and again, there's links to these slides below, um, and also provide a link to the, uh, the actual other series of uh, videos that you may want to watch. Um, but for emphatic pronouns, the focus um, of the sentence is going to be on the pronoun itself, or in other words, the subject of the sentence. If you're using descriptive pronouns, the focus is more on the story, describing what actually happened. For emphatic pronouns, in the sentence structure, the pronoun always follows the verb. In descriptive pronouns, the pronoun always precedes the verb. So it's different sentence, sentence structures. Um, the sentence structure we'll use for emphatic pronouns is the same sentence structure as I've covered in a previous video over simple verbs. Uh, and then finally, emphatic pronouns can be used as either the subject of a sentence or an object of a sentence. Descriptive pronouns can only be used for a subject. They are never the object. So that's why I've chose to do this first video on emphatic pronouns. I'll do another video on descriptive pronouns. Uh, so, as you can see in the slide, and again, I, I really encourage you guys, if you're serious about this, go to the link below, download the slides, you can kind of follow along and make notes. Um, but basically, what I've got up here in this table is um, we've got the different perspectives of pronouns, so whether it's first person, second person, or third person. And then we've also got whether we're talking about one person, two people, or three people. In English, we don't have this concept of a dual pronoun. In English, it's either singular or plural, and a lot of times, um, and, and that's it. In Psalm 1, there, there, there's a distinction between those. Um, also, what's unique in Psalm 1 is instead of just having being first person, second person, third person, and again, if you're not familiar, first person are pronouns where you're talking about yourself, the person talking. So I is a first person pronoun. We is a first person pronoun. Second person is a pronoun that stands for the person you're actually talking to. So you is a second person pronoun. And then third person is someone that's outside of the conversation altogether. That would be like a he, she, it, or they in English. So in Psalm 1, we also have this concept of inclusive and exclusive pronouns when we're talking about um, the first person perspective. And what that means is, particularly when it comes to plural or dual pronouns, that's really where the difference comes in. Inclusive means it's a pronoun that includes the person you're talking to as well. So for example, if you're talking to a friend, you're saying, hey, why don't we go to the store? You're definitely including your friend in that we, for example. But if you're coming home from school one day and you're talking to your, your, your wife or your, your parents or whatever, and you, you tell them like, oh, we did this at school today, we did this, well, your your mom wasn't at school with you, you know, your wife wasn't at school with you. Um, so they are excluded from that. And that's the concept of inclusive versus exclusive. 
So as you've seen in other videos, maybe at this point, I'll try and demonstrate the pronunciation of, of the pronoun, and then we'll give some examples to kind of give you an idea of like how to actually use these. So I'll go across the top first for in the first person inclusive case. For singular, the um, first person pronoun in someone is au, au. And again, this is more or less the equivalent to I in English. Um, and for dual, it's itaua, itaua. Uh, for plural, it's itato, itato. First person exclusive is, uh, it's, it's still au for, for singular, so there's no difference between inclusive and exclusive when you're talking about a singular first person pronoun. But when it comes to dual and plural, instead of saying itaua and itato, we say imaua and imato, imaua and imato. Again, all we're doing is switching out the T for an M. For second person, singular, it's oi, oi, and in English that would be the equivalent of you. Um, for dual, it's olua, olua, and plural, it's oto, oto. So you can see there is some similarities in the dual in the sense that we still end in ua. Um, if it helps you remember, if you know how to count in Samoan, and we've I've covered that in a previous video, um, but you'll notice that the word for two in Samoan is lua, and so you can kind of see that common ending in all of the dual pronouns. Um, in the plural pronoun oto, you'll notice that it still ends in that t-o-u, so that's kind of the the common linkage there, oto. All right, third person, finally, it's uh, oia for the singular, oia. In parentheses, I put ia because sometimes the o does drop off, um, oia. For dual, it's ilaua, ilaua, and plurals ilato, ilato. So just like the, the first person um, pronouns, it's the same words, but we switch out a T, we switch out a T for an L to make it the third person case. And again, ilato in, in English would be like they, um, if that makes sense. All right, and I mentioned before the, the sentence structure for these emphatic pronouns is the same sentence structure for when you're using regular nouns. It's tense marker, plus the verb, plus a noun. And again, if you're not familiar with what tense markers are, I will go back to that simplified verb video and I'll cover what tense markers are in Psalm 1. So in the examples below, the first one I have is saita au. Saita au. Sa is the tense marker for past tense. Ita is the Psalm 1 verb for angry, um, which I know isn't a verb in, in English, but in Psalm 1 it is a verb. Uh, was the first person singular pronoun. So this translates to, I was angry. Now, I've bolded and underlined the word I here because in reality, we're, we're still using an emphatic pronoun. And what that means is that the focus is on the pronoun itself. So really the way I might say this in English would be like, I was angry. Somehow that's significant if I was to use the emphatic pronoun. I'm using these emphatic pronouns first because it, it's easier to plug in and, and do sentences with them. But in reality, most of the time, when you're using pronouns as a subject of a sentence, you'll actually be using descriptive pronouns. But these are absolutely acceptable. They will get you by. And like I said, I'll, I'll put another video out there for descriptive pronouns. Um, second example is Olea momoi ilato. Olea momoi ilato. Olea is the future tense marker in someone. Momoi is the plural version of the verb sleep. And ilato is the third person plural pronoun. So it's they will sleep. And again, really the emphasis is on they, so it's they will sleep. That makes sense. All right, so I thought we'd do a practice exercise that might help cement some of this. So in the blue table here, um, I've got some English sentences on the left-hand side. And the objective is to try and come up with a translation in Psalm 1 um, and I'll reveal the answers as we go through. But what I would do is, again, I'd print out the slide and I would try and, you know, come either write down or, or come up with the Psalm 1 translation and then, you know, pause the video, take as long as you need to, um, and then see if you got it right. So up here, just to put it all in one slide, I've got the tense markers. And then I've also got uh, a list of verbs there um, just to kind of actually construct these sentences together. 
I'll go through and again, I'll demonstrate the pronunciation for all of these. Um, and I'll kind of go over really quickly on tense markers again. And I'll talk a little bit about how some a, a common way to make a verb plural in Samoan. I don't know of a hard and fast rule. That I, I don't pluralize every single verb personally in Samoan, and maybe I'm wrong in that. Um, and But there are some verbs that have very specific ways to pluralize, and I'll go over a couple of those here. Um, but first, with the tense markers, again, highly encourage you to go back to the previous video to kind of get an understanding of what tense markers are. But again, the past tense is sa and na. Uh, present perfective is ua. And again, that's something that happened in the past, but the effects are still being felt uh, presently. Olo, olo is the present progressive. So that's basically, if you use a verb in English with ing, it means you're in the olo tense in Samoan. The ete tense is present continuous. These are more like describing just attributes of a person. They just are. Um, I call it the ete tense, but really we don't use te unless uh, we're using descriptive pronouns. For So for all the examples I have here, we'll, that'll just be a. And then olea is the future tense marker, as I've talked about before. On the verb side, we've got alu or o. Alu is the singular um, verb for to go in Samoan. O is the plural version of that, meaning if one person is going somewhere, they're going to alu. If multiple people are going somewhere, they're going to o. Um, same concept with uh, the next one, sau and omai. Sau is to come in Samoan for a singular person, and omai is for plural. One person will sau, many people will omai. Tautala is to speak in Samoan. You might pluralize this by repeating the second to last syllable. So you might say tautatala. Um, atta is laugh or smile in Samoan. I honestly don't know of a plural version of that. Um, tangi. Uh, tangi is to cry in Samoan. A plural version of that would be tatangi. Mafafau is to think, uh, and I don't know of a plural version of that either. Nofo is to sit or, or to stay. Plural would be nonofo. Again, repeating the second to last syllable. Nonofo. Moi is to sleep. The plural version of that would be momoi. Momoi. Savali is to walk. Plural version again would be savavali. Savavali. Repeating that second to last syllable. Fia fia, happy or to like. Ita um, is angry. The plural version of that is kind of unique. It's feitai. This is not one I would really stress about. I think you can get away without worrying too much about pluralized verbs in general. You can get away with it. I wouldn't stress about it. All right, so the first English sentence is, I speak Psalm 1. I speak Psalm 1. So I'll reveal the translation. We're using the A tense because this is really a present continuous type of thing. It's someone's attribute. I speak Psalm 1. It's just, it is what it is. Tautala fa'asamoa. Tautala is to speak. Fa'asamoa just means in the Samoan way. Um, and then that is the singular um, pronoun. Next, they are sleeping. And here we're talking about plural version of the of the pronoun they. So in Samoan that would be Olo Mamoi Ilato. Olo is because it's present progressive. It's happening right now. Mamoi to sleep, ilato, third person pronoun. Uh, next one, they cried. And we're talking about two people in this case. In Samoan, it's satatangi ila ua. Satatangi ila ua. Next, uh, we are happy. In this, in this case, using the exclusive um, first person pronoun, uh, plural. So that translates to e fia fia imato. A fia fia imato. Next one down, we will sit using inclusive and plural pronouns. Olea nonofo itato. Olea nonofo itato. Next one, have you become angry? So it's just a question, and again, uh, I'll kind of go over the intonation in a minute here, but have you become angry using the singular pronoun for you? In Samoan, that's waita oi. And if you go back to the video about asking questions of someone, you'll know that the um, intonation goes, it kind of goes up 
and then drops off right at the very end. Woita oi. All right. Uh, moving on. Uh, we will walk using the exclusive and dual pronouns. Translates to Olea savavali ima ua. Olea savavali ima ua. Next English sentence. He smiles. Singular. E atta oia. E atta oia. And then finally, they have come. Plural. Translates to Ua o mai ilato. Ua o mai ilato. And again, we're using the ua tense because they came at some point in the past, but they're still here. So that's why we use ua. Um, anyway, I really, really hope this was helpful. Definitely, if it was, uh, hit the like button, hit the dislike button. If it wasn't helpful, tell me why. Um, put something in the comments. Let me know if this is something that um, you want, uh, that people are interested in. So I appreciate it. Um, hope that was helpful.